Hi everyone. I am Dr. Divya Gupta, your original guru for periodontics, and welcome to the PYQ marathon session. So, guys, we are having this session exactly one month before your NEET MDS examination. So, I just would like to begin the session with: You are so close to the victory. Don't you dare give up now. So, guys, in this session, how we will go is: uh, See. as you all know what we are discussing we are discussing the previous years questions right so we have picked i have picked 20 questions from the previous years that questions you already have read it you already have studied most of the things from that topic right so how we will be going is i will read the question and read all the options there you have to give me the answer in the telegram group in 5 seconds okay so that you know guys i'll come to know what uh, where you all are means how you all have uh, like uh, till now what in what concepts are clear till now in perio okay where you are lacking and accordingly i'll explain you i'll we can you know continue this this discussion so uh, i'll be reading the question giving you all the options you have 5 seconds to answer okay so let us begin with the first question and uh, if you have any doubt you can ask me in the telegram group i'll be continuously seeing that group also guys so the first question is i hope the image is clear everything is clear guys am i am i audible everything is clear please give give me thumbs up everything is clear am i audible and are you all ready to give the answers to these questions don't worry it's not like we'll not be discussing the you know the questions we'll be discuss discussing the explanations also but i want you all to think in a manner in which you are going to think in your neat mds examinations okay that's why i have planned like this okay so which suture is shown in the image below okay which suture is seen in the image below so here you can see that the suture is going this is the buccal part and this is the lingual part so the suture is penetrating the buccal aspect and from the inner aspect of the lingual flap it is coming out of the lingual side and then a knot is tied here on the buccal aspect okay so the options to this question uh, to this question is figure of 8 option a is figure of 8 option b is closed anchor suture option c is loop suture and option d sling suture so uh, now please type your answers guys what according to you is this suture whether it is figure of 8 loop suture closed anchor suture see see the image clearly and answer me sumit aishwarya ani sunil tr dr You have five seconds, guys. Please answer the question fast. See here, the suture is penetrating from the buccal aspect, buccal flap. It is going to the lingual flap from the inner aspect. So, what can be the answer to this question, guys? What is this suture? Okay. okay so two people have answered very good very good for your answers but guys the correct answer to this question is loop suture guys loop suture c loop suture okay so guys what is a loop what is a loop anything that is a circle is a loop right it is a loop so here in the image you can see that how the suture is going it is penetrating from the buccal aspect going like this and coming and like uh, you know the knot is given on the buccal side so this is a loop suture guys now most of you answered d d is sling suture so i'll show you the image of the sling suture so you will get some clarity how is a sling suture so what is a sling all of you have see a uh, sling right when you know anything that is holding during fractures we put something around the neck and then around the hand right you have seen that so that is a sling a sling that is holding something so in this case in this case the suture is acting as a sling and it is holding 
so here this this is the sling suture so first i'll explain it to you what is a sling suture sling anything imagine a hand which uh, around which this uh, when a fractured sling is tied right so here the hand you have to correlate with the tooth and the suture is tied around the tooth that is a sling suture guys so you don't have to confuse it with a loop suture in sling suture what is done is sling suture is given in cases when only one flap is open either a buccal flap or a lingual flap either a buccal flap or a lingual flap okay when only a one flap is open and what is done so guys this is a sling suture sorry here this image has overlapped just give me a second okay so here i'll just show it to you this is a sling suture okay this is a sling suture the uh, here only one flap is open the buccal flap this is the buccal flap this is the lingual flap the suture, uh, the needle is penetrating from the buccal side it will not penetrate the lingual flap because the lingual flap is not open then it will encircle the tooth like this it will encircle the tooth from the lingual aspect and the interproximal space it will come to the buccal aspect it will come to the buccal aspect then it will penetrate here again this flap will be penetrated it will encircle and here a knot will be tied so it is like this the sling is like this this two the suture is anchoring the tooth it is surrounding the tooth like a sling that you have to remember so that is sling suture okay here this see you don't have you just you in the exam you should know four types of sutures loop suture figure of eight sutures sling suture and anchor sutures guys these sutures will be asked because these sutures are the sutures that are given in karanza so you must know that them this is a figure of eight suture in figure of eight suture what will happen is the uh, needle will be penetrating the buccal flap from the lingual side it will go on the lingual side and uh, the needle again will penetrate from the outer aspect and here it will come from the interproximal space and a knot will be tied here so when you will look from the interproximal space you will see that there is a formation of eight like this and in the loop suture what is happening like this the needle is not penetrating from the outer aspect the needle is not penetrating here it is not penetrating from the outer aspect it is penetrating from the inner aspect in loop suture in loop suture so don't confuse loop suture with figure of eight suture this is a loop suture this is a figure of eight suture yes i'll show you the anchor suture guys don't worry i'll show it to you so this is the anchor suture this is the anchor suture and this suture is given to close the spaces edentula spaces around the tooth so whenever there is a space suppose there is a single tooth present and there is a space mesial or distal to this tooth and we have to close this uh, flap we have to close this flap then how we will do it with the help of closed anchor suture or anchor suture so in anchor suture what is happening is the flap is penetrated from the buccal side the needle penetrates the buccal aspect of the flap this is the buccal this is the lingual then from the inner side of the lingual flap it will come out okay now what is happening here is it will again go to the forward uh, means to the buccal side it will anchor the tooth here it will surround the tooth like this from the proximal aspect it will come here here a knot will be tied so it is taking the support of the tooth so that the flap will be the edentulous region will be in close approximation with the tooth you are understanding the flap the edentulous region here if we are just suturing it with a loop suture or figure of eight suture there will be not that much tight contact on this aspect of the tooth right on the distal in this picture on the distal aspect of the tooth so to firmly adhere the gingiva firmly adhere the gums of the tooth to the adjacent tooth we have to give a closed anchor suture this is the closed anchor suture guys 
okay so don't be confused only these four sutures are important four to five sutures which are given in karanza will be asked in one year crossover suture was asked but that is not important because no one will be able to answer that question okay now okay clear everyone clear now the next question is which of these clinical feature is not seen in anag or anap anag and anap is acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis acute necrotizing ulcerative periodontitis okay this a very important topic every year there is a question from nag or nap so let us see the option okay this is the option now from this this is a multiple choice means you know, there are more than one correct answer to this question there are more than one correct answer to this question guys so in this question read the question very carefully which of these clinical features is not seen in nag or nap okay not which is not a feature that is the keyword here so the options are is pocket seen in nag recession third option is mobility fourth is common in children fifth is contagious sixth is bone loss and seventh is tooth loss okay guys so the correct answer select the correct answer given below the code okay so in this at least two to three features in such questions you should be clear about two to three features if you find ke ha this option uh, means uh, this is not there suppose we say pocket is not there then you have to look for that uh, you know that option in the options ma'am yes okay tell me the answer guys first okay the answer to very good uh, doc dr what's your name i don't know but uh, very good this is the correct answer the correct answer is b now what you have to look in this question is first you must know what are the clinical features what are the very good sunil answer is b very good okay so first you must know what is the uh, what are the clinical features that are seen in nag so in nag as we all know there is acute necrotizing necrosis of the gingiva is seen right there is formation of pseudo membrane so what are features are seen there is necrosis pseudo membrane formation right crater formation if only these three you will remember with the help of common sense you will be able to answer the question now in necrosis what is happening whole of the gingiva is necrosed it is going so if necrosis is there if gingiva is not there do you think there will be pocket formation guys if gingiva is not there do you think there will be pocket formation no so one option uh, which is one feature which is not seen in nag is pocket formation this so we have to look what where, where all one is there in which option one is present okay you don't need to know all the features guys recession is present mobility can be seen bone loss can be seen tooth loss can be seen but nag is not common in children if you know all the options well and good if you know all the clinical features very good very well but even if you will remember only one feature one or two features guys maximum okay then also you will be able to answer such questions because see in this question only if you will know that pocket i know definitely that there is recession but there is no pocket formation in nag this is a very specific and very important feature of nag even if that you will know you will be able to answer the question she in the options only only option b has option 1 right so that for sure you know ke ha one one is the uh, option which is not a feature of nag so by that by, uh, by using such you know little presence of mind guys you will be able to answer the question so in this the answer is b so other options are 4 and 5 so it is common in children no it is not common in children it is common in patients who, who have you know compromised immunity and it is not contagious that is also one of the differentiating feature of nag with acute herpetic gingival stomatitis so very good who all answered the question correctly b the correct answer to this question is b now the next question guys we will be going a little faster because we only have 40 to 50 minutes for this session 
Now, this is a recent INI May 2023 question. The question is, there is an assumption that management of gingival health in a pregnant female has impact on adverse pregnancy outcome. So, in this, the answer to this question, uh, so the state, they are asking whether statement one is true, whether statement true is two is true or both the statements are true. Okay. So, read the statements very carefully. Pregnancy and other very important topic guys. In pregnancy, you must know. What are the changes that are oral changes that are occurring in a pregnant woman? Okay. What are the features, gingival features? Why those clear, you know, why those changes are occurring in pregnancy? That you must be, which is the bacteria which is increasing in pregnant patients? Prevotella intermedia. Why these preg uh, gingival changes are happening? Because of increase in progesterone and estradiol. All these things we have discussed in our recorded sessions, in our live sessions, guys. So you must be clear with them. Okay. See the recorded videos in rapid revision also, you know, important topics are discussed very nicely. So see them. This is the time when you must, you know, be clear with these things. So there is an assumption that management of gingival health in a pregnant female has impact on adverse pregnancy outcome. And statement two is if this is proved, it can be of considerable help in aversion of APO is already they have given the uh, full form adverse pregnancy outcome as these factors are preventable. So here what the statement one is they, uh, telling is preg uh, if we manage the gingival health of the pregnant patient then we can control the adverse pregnancy outcomes like the preterm birth and low birth weight babies, the premature rupture of membranes that all the adverse effects that are happening can be controlled by uh, these management of periodontitis. And statement two is, if this is proved, it can be of considerable help in aversion of APOs. Now, let's see the, uh, I think only one person is answering my questions. Very good. Uh, answer to this question is C. Both the statements are correct. Very good. Uh, don't know your name. DR, very good. So, the answer to this question is C. This is the correct. Why? Because in pregnant females, it is noticed that patients who are having periodontitis, patients who are having periodontitis, what happens is this I have already explained, but still in short, I will explain it to you. What, what is happening in periodontitis? There is increase in gram negative bacteria, right? And there is increase in, there is increase in cytokines, cytokines like interleukins, prostaglandins, uh, TNF alpha. Okay. Now what is happening is these gram negative bacteria directly with the hematogenous root. Directly from the hematogenous root, they can go to the fetoplacental unit. Unit and what they do is they will cause increase in prostaglandins, increase in interleukin, one, all these are inflammatory mediators which are already present in gingivitis, in periodontitis, right? Already there is increase in the inflammatory mediators that we have already studied. So, when these factors are increasing, it is seen that there is premature contraction of the uterus and there is preterm birth. There is early delivery of the child. Okay, like preterm birth occurs when the child is let, less than 28 weeks. Okay, so this is what is happening. If in gingiva we know that there is increase in the inflammatory mediators, there is increase in prostaglandins, increase in interleukin 1, interleukin 4, interleukin 6, interleukin 8, all these are pro-inflammatory cytokines. So these also they can directly go to the fetoplacental unit and they can cause early uterine contraction. Okay guys, so the answer to this question is C, both the statements are correct. Now, the next question is, which of these is not a factor associated with trauma from gingival retraction? It is asking not a factor associated, which of these is not a factor which is causing trauma to the gingiva when a gingival retraction cord is placed. So, the options are, number A, attached gingiva, when attached gingiva is more than 2 mm, gingival recession. Pushing the cord forcefully and D is diameter of the cord. 
Come on, guys, start answering fast. Honey. Honey A. Okay. Okay, very good. Very good. Yes. Anyone else? Only one person is answering to my question. I don't know why. Yes. Very good. Sunil Parmar. Very good. Hmm. Okay. So, now the answer to this question is A. This is a recent November 2023 question. Answer to this question is A. Very good. Asna Ali, Sohini, Sunil. Very good. So, the answer to this question is A. <coughs> now, why? So, look at the question. First, we have to see what are the factors which will cause trauma to the gingiva, right? So, in this, you can see that we'll keep aside the option A. First, uh, second option is gingival recession. If gingival recession is present, what will happen? In gingival recession, the width of attached gingiva is decreasing. Okay. And the gingival biotype is thin. Already the recession is there. The gingival biotype is thin. So what will happen? If we will put the retraction cord, trauma from the retraction cord will easily happen. So this can cause the trauma from gingival retraction. Pushing the cord forcefully, obviously this will, if we are pushing anything forcefully inside the uh, sulcus, it will cause trauma, right? And diameter, more the diameter, more the chances of trauma. So these are obvious options. You can get confused with this, but guys, just remember whenever there is recession, what is happening? There is decrease in the, decrease in width of attached gingiva and you must know that what is a healthy gingiva? What is a healthy width of attached gingiva? So in order to maintain health of the gingiva in order to maintain healthy gingiva the width of attached gingiva should be equal to 2 mm or sometimes you can say it should be more than 1 mm anything which is less than 1 mm will cause increased chances of inflammation. Increased chances of gingival inflammation. So here, if they would have, ma'am, can you please tell what's the relation of gingival biotype with orthodontic intrusion and extrusion? Okay, gingival biotype. Guys, see. Let me see what is the time, 8.23. Okay, in gingival, what is gingival biotype? What is gingival biotype? Gingival biotype is the thickness of the gingiva. Gingival biotype is equal to thickness of the gingiva. Okay. Thickness of gingiva. So, if we are extruding a tooth and the gingival biotype is thin, if we are giving forces to the tooth, any forces, intrusive forces or extrusive forces, and the gingival biotype is thin, then there are more chances of, there are more chances of recession. If the gingival biotype is thin, gingival biotype can be thick, thin or medium means it, it can be moderately thick. Okay, if the gingival biotype is thin, then there are increased chances of recession. In cases of increased orthodontic forces or even with normal orthodontic forces there are more chances of recession so whenever an ortho patient comes to you and you see that there is uh, you know thin gingival uh, biotype specifically in the mandibular anterior region and in the upper anterior regions more commonly in the mandibular anterior regions you will find a thin gingival biotype so if you have such patients make sure that you already inform them them that in future there are chances that with ortho after ortho treatment there are chances of recession. So you have to see to it that, you know, uh, what type of gingival biotype the patient has. Hopefully the answer, to, uh, you know, your doubt is cleared. Now the next question, cleaning of plaque from implant surface in peri-implantitis uh, peri is done by using which of these? Implant surface, peri-implantitis is inflammation of the gingiva around the implants, okay? So, whenever there is peri-implantitis, what we do, how we clean the implant surface, the options are option A, ultrasonic instruments, option B, hand instruments, option C, plastic instruments and option D, curettes. I need the answers fast. 
वी डोंट हैव दैट मच टाइम गाइज आई बी नाउ मच मोर फास्टर ओके वेरी गुड एनी असना डी हीना सुनील वेरी गुड या द आंसर सो यू नो द आंसर टू दिस क्वेश्चन इज सी वेरी गुड so why we are do using plastic instruments and why you are we are not using a stainless steel instruments because there are increased chances of corrosion whenever we are using a metal instrument against a titanium uh, insert or implant there are increased chances of corrosion so we need to use plastic periodontal probes so here the probes here are the probes which are used for measure the pocket around the implants plastic probes and plastic curettes these are the probes this is for your image image based questions okay and these are the curettes for cleaning the implant surface okay now the next question initial so this another very important topic every year one question is there so initial colonizers of dental plaque are yellow and orange complex option b is yellow and purple complex option c is purple and green complex and option d is red and green complex guys come on start answering fast honey a okay okay guys fast 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 the answer to this question is b yellow and purple complex now let us see this complex every time i am discussing this complex still i think you guys have you know some doubts in this so guys don't try to remember everything it's difficult for me also you know to remember all these bacteria it's really difficult so don't try to remember everything just remember the complexes and the species the species is very important and some exceptions you need to remember okay so in this uh, you how you will remember is the primary colonizers or the early colonizers come in purple and yellow purple and yellow complex okay so these two complexes are the primary colonizers now actinomyces species is a species which is a discrete bacteria it is uh, it is not uh, it is an independent species it cannot be clustered in one group so it is spreaded in many complexes so how you will remember actinomyces so actinomyces the important strain of actinomyces is strain a which is responsible for causing aggregative bacter actinomycetes comitans uh, sorry aggressive periodontitis okay strain a is responsible for causing aggressive periodontitis a a just remember the a a so actinomyces strain a is responsible for causing a a that is as uh, aggressive periodontitis that is asked in exams and it belongs to it belongs to green complex you have to remember that how you will remember it that i will tell you afterwards so first let us see the primary colonizers belong to purple complex and yellow complex purple complex mein uh, there will be actinomyces species and volinella species volinella spelling will be somewhat different but volinella species is there okay so this you have to remember that in purple complex actinomyces odontolycus is there just remember the actinomyces एक्टिनोमाइसिस स्पीशीज है एक जो पर्पल कॉम्प्लेक्स में है एंड वॉलिनेला ए बी ए वी यू रिमेंबर ए वी ओके एंड इन येलो कॉम्प्लेक्स ऑल द स्ट्रेप्टोकोकस स्पीशीज आर प्रेजेंट स्ट्रेप्टोकोकस नथिंग मोर देन दैट आई थिंक दैट इज सिंपल टू रिमेंबर राइट इन येलो कॉम्प्लेक्स स्ट्रेप्टोकोकस स्पीशीज इज देर वन एक्सेप्शन यू हैव टू रिमेंबर हियर इज वन एक्सेप्शन इज स्ट्रेप्टोकोकस कॉन्स्टलेटर्स दिस streptococcus constellatus is a species which is not present in yellow complex it is present in orange complex only one exception you remember other than that nothing you need to remember okay so we have finished our primary colonizers easy to remember if you will be asked in exams which amongst the following is not a primary colonizers and they will give you in options all the streptococcus they will give you streptococcus mites oralis sanguis and streptococcus constellatus so the answer to that question will be streptococcus constellatus okay now the secondary colonizers sorry secondary colonizers this secondary colonizers guys these how you will remember you have to remember the traffic signal lights this is green orange and red green green is good go everything is fine you can go forward so in this bacterias which are good which are good bacteria important for periodontal health are present in this periodontal health are present in this 
complex and you can remember ACE, the short form ACE. So in ACE, one A I already told you is actinomyces species strain A, which is important for aggressive periodontitis. Okay. Next is Echinella corrodens E, Echinella corrodens and C. C is Capnocytophaga, species only you need to remember and nothing else. Just remember the species, Capnocytophaga species. Okay. Now, this orange, this orange is a very important complex because it acts as a bridging complex. The bacteria here acts as a bridging bacteria and the important bridging bacteria is Fusobacterium nucleatum. Fusobacterium nucleatum. So, one species is easy to remember because everywhere they are giving that the bridging bacteria is Fusobacterium nucleatum. So, Fusobacterium nucleatum, another bacteria which you need to remember here is Prevotella species. So, Fusobacterium, Prevotella, okay, and Compilobacter. Only species, guys, nothing mo more than this, Compilobacter. These three species are present and this Fusobacterium is very important. That is the more uh, important bridging bacteria. It is present in the periodontal pocket. Now comes the most important complex which is red complex. Red in traffic signal light also it is dangerous, right? So in red what you need to remember is PTT, prothrombin time. It, it is measured for clotting in the blood. Blood is red. So, it is a red complex and PTT. P stands for Porphyromonas gingivalis. P gingivalis. T is Tannerella forsythus. And another T is Triponema denticola. Easy to remember. This complex is responsible for bleeding on probing. So, I think now it is somewhat clear how to remember these species, guys. Please, if you have any doubt, ask me in the telegram group. I'll clear it afterwards because now we are running short of time. Now, the seventh question is, in which of these conditions do we see interdental bone lower than the interradicular bone? Okay. Now, first you need to uh, know what is interradicular. First, let me tell, uh, first tell me the answer to this question. Option A is positive architecture. Option B is osseous crater. Option C is flat architecture. And option D is none of the above. Chalo guys, first. In which of these conditions do we see interdental bone lower than the interradicular bone? So guys, let me tell you what is interdental bone and what is interradicular bone. Okay, then I think you will be able to answer this question nicely. So, the bone that is present in this region, in between the roots of a multi-rooted tooth, interradicular bone will be seen in a multi-rooted tooth. So, this this bone is your interradicular bone. This is the interradicular bone. And this bone, which you see here, this bone. In between the tooth, interdental means between the tooth. This is your interdental bone. Okay, now answer me the question fast. Huh? D, T. Okay, guys. So, no. The answer to this question is osseous crater. A slightly difficult question. I can understand because it is difficult for you all to visualize, right? So, let me show you this picture. This image is clear. Okay, this is an image from Karanza. Here you can see that this is a multi-rooted tooth, guys. This is a multi-rooted tooth. And here you can see that this bone, this bone is the interradicular bone. This outer plate, this outer plate which you see here is the cortical bone, okay. Between that, between this bone, it is a socket, okay. Try to visualize guys. It is a three-dimensional, this photograph is a two-dimensional image. Try to visualize in 3D that in between, what is present? In between is the cancellous bone. So here, whatever bone we are talking about is the cancellous bone, okay. This whole of this is a cancellous bone. Now. You can see that here the interradicular bone is up till the crest, up till the trunk, right? It is complete. But in between this, this region, in this region, there is a hole. There is a shallow crater formation, right? That you can be, this radiograph will help you to visualize more. Here you can see in the, uh, this is the root, right? This is the root and here, 
the bone is up till the crest of the root trunk now in the interdental area the bone is lowered this here you can see this so this typical feature is seen in osseous craters crater means anything that is shallow and punched out any saucer shaped defect that is present is a crater any saucer shape shape defect okay so this is an osseous crater if along with the interradicular and interdental bone this bone the cortical bone would have also been lost and in the options there would have been negative architecture negative architecture in the option then that would have been a more appropriate answer for you all okay if in the options apart from a flat architecture positive architecture there would have been negative architecture then you have to choose that as an answer but here osseous crater is the best answer to select okay i hope it is clear guys osseous crater now the next question is very simple question sub antimicrobial dose of doxycycline is sdd fast guys sdd is also known as periostat sdd is also known as periostat tell me fast what is the answer to this question very good guys very good so the answer to this question is a very good hina asna sunil very good the answer to this question is a the dosage is 20 mg twice daily twice daily for 3 months and it can extend up to 9 months okay to 9 months very good okay now the next question is which of these statements is false regarding gracie curens and other very important question very important topic instruments right very important every year one or two questions are coming from this image based questions are coming theoretical questions are coming so which of these statement is false regarding gracie curens the options are number a it has two cutting edges option b is it is area specific option c is offset 70 degrees and option d is it has two curvatures so here they are asking false means which of the following is not a feature of gracie curet come on guys fast okay very good all of you got it correct it is a the answer is a so let us see quickly the difference of gracie and universal curet it is a uh, grace curate is a set of instruments it is only a one curate universal curate is one curate can be used in all the surfaces it has one cutting edge it has two cutting edges the universal curate has two cutting edges the blade curves at a it has two plane it curves in two plane it has one plane only and the blade is offset in grace curate it is not offset the offset angle that is given in garanza is 60 degrees guys somewhere some at some places it is given 70 degrees at some places it is given 60 degrees and if it uh, and if in options there is 60 degree and 70 degree both are given you have to choose 60 degrees because in karanza it is 60 degrees okay now next question is identify the flap technique based upon the incisions marked in the dotted lines between the teeth most of you you know i think uh, you get confused in surgical questions so uh, identify the flap technique okay uh, i'll uh, i'll answer to this question doctor but uh, as we are uh, you know lacking in time i'll answer it afterwards surely i'll answer it uh, about gracie curvet na i'll answer it i'll post the picture of that question also uh, of the gracie curvet gracie curvet is just that the blade is slightly curved it is slightly curved i'll post a picture and then you will be able to un uh, understand the instrument better so the options already the pe people have answered very good uh, modified weedman flap papillary preservation flap apically displaced flap and undisplaced flap so the answer to this question is very good yes papillary preservation flap b this incision this incision is of ppf if incision like this would have been given like this so 
So this is an incision for undisplaced flap. And undisplaced flap. And this is a crevicular incision. Why it is a clavicular incision? Because what these dotted lines show is the incision is given into the sulcus and this dotted line shows that it is given in the interdental region. So it is a clavicular incision. Okay. Mostly, most commonly they will be asking you this and the answer to this question is papillary preservation flap. Somebody asked me, to, you know, to uh, just... Uh, show in a table format uh, what are the different type of incisions and everything that also I have noted and I'll be sharing it soon. So it will, you know, you will be more, uh, it will give you more clarity. Now the next question is identify the following instrument in the picture. So what, what is this instrument guys? You have to identify. A bit tricky question. Options are 3 CH by 11, 18 by 3 CH, 17 by 23 and none of the above. So your time starts now. Yes, this is an explorer. Very good. Very good Asna. Very good doctor. Very good. Very good guys. Very good. Yes. Yes, the answer to this question is C, 17 by 23. So in this 17 and 23, what is 17, what is 23? So first look at this. These are the five uh, different types of explorers which you will see. Explorers are used to detect the calculus, the proximal calculus, the subgingival calculus, the supragingival calculus, the flex of calculus can be detected with explorers. So, with the explorers, you will be detecting that. How you will remember? So, uh, how you will remember the numbers? Obviously, it is difficult, right? So, 17. Here, you can see that it is a double-ended instrument. It is a double-ended instrument. On one end, it is a shepherd's, shepherd's hook type of uh, end. And the other end is of Orban's type, right? Orban's type. So, this first is the Orban's type. And Orbans is 17. So this image, this image you can see that is this is somewhat resembling to 7. This image is somewhat resembling to 7. So remember 17. Now shepherd's hook. This is a shepherd's hook type of explorer. Shepherd's hook type of explorer. In uh, later, in ancient times, what the shepherds used to do? They used to carry a rod with this type of end so that they will be able to hold the Sheeps. Okay, so this is called as shepherd's hook. This instrument somewhat resembles two. Okay, somewhat resembles two. two. It is 23. Then C is EXD 1112. 1112. You need to remember the Gracie curates. The curates. Curates 11 and 12. So the image of the curates. This is this instrument looks similar to a curate. The design of the shank and everything is like a curate. It is curved at many ends. So you have to remember the curate number 11 and 12 and it is 11 and 12. It is curved in many directions, two to three directions. Then this is a curved explorer. This curved explorer is number three. And lastly, 3CH. So you need to remember here, this is a pigtail. Similar to a C. So it is 3CH, pigtail. Okay. So the answer to this question is C. Very good guys. Now the next question is periodontal disease. Term not used in recent classification. So recent classification was. Uh, means the periodontal classification was modified in the year 2017. Uh, 2017 by 
American Academy of Periodontology and European Council. Both of this uh, Federation Council, both of them came together and classified the questions, classified, reclassified the periodontal diseases. So, periodontal disease term not used in the recent classification is aggressive periodontitis, periodontitis, necrotizing periodontal disease and all of the above. Answers, guys. Fast. Okay. If you all want, I can share you the link in this group uh, uh, of the article. So, it, you know, you can go through the classification ones. The answer to this question is very good, Hina. So now everyone very good for attempting the question. It is A, aggressive periodontitis. Now aggressive periodontitis is not there. Remember that in the recent classification in periodontitis, they have classified periodontitis as periodontitis, necrotizing periodontitis and periodontitis due to systemic diseases. Periodontitis due to systemic diseases. Now, in this periodontitis itself, they have given, according to the rate of progression, they have reclassified it as slow, moderate rate of progression and rapid rate of progression. So, aggressive periodontitis, they comes under rapid rate of disease progression. Okay, so I will be sharing the uh, article in the group and you can go through it. Now, the next question is, which of these following laser is used for osseous radicular resection? Osseous radicular means it is a hard tissue laser, right? Osseous means bone. Which of these lasers is used for bone? So, somebody asked me in the group only, say, which are the uh, soft tissue lasers and which are the hard tissue lasers? So, guys, lasers, how the lasers act that you must know. So, the lasers act by acting on specific, you know, pigments. The pigments in our body are water, hemoglobin, melanin and hydroxyapatite, right? So, and proteins. So, you need to remember how these, uh, you need to remember this chart. This chart I have already explained in the uh, recorded sessions of laser. What you need to remember is diode laser. Diode laser acts on specifically on hemoglobin and melanin. It has higher intensity on melanin, on hemoglobin. So, it is a soft tissue laser because these two pigments are present into the soft tissues. Now, next is the ND YAG. ND YAG laser acts on melanin and hemoglobin melanin and hemoglobin so it is also a soft tissue laser next comes the see here you can see this straight line this straight line is of hydroxyapatite and you can see a sudden peak here the sudden peak is because this wavelength this wavelength is absorbed specifically into the hydroxyapatite other than that all the wavelengths are not absorbed this wavelength and carbon dioxide wavelength is absorbed but carbon dioxide also has highest effect on water. So, the uh, side effect of using carbon dioxide on the tooth is it reaches up to the pulp and it destroys the pulp. But this two, these two are erbium YAG and erbium chromium YSGG. These two do not act on any of the pigments, hemoglobin and melanin. They are not absorbed by hemoglobin and melanin. So, they are not absorbed by the pulp. It acts only on the heart tissue. So, you have to remember the only heart tissue laser is heart tissue laser is erbium YAG and erbium chromium YSGG. Other than that, all are soft tissue lasers. Carbon dioxide is also a hard and soft tissue laser, but specifically it acts on soft tissue because if we are using it, uh, it on tooth, it can cause damage to the pulp. That's why we are not using carbon dioxide. Okay. So, the answer to this question is erbium chromium YSPG. C. Very good, guys. Very good. Okay. Now, the next question is match the drug to the dose. So, in this type of questions also, one trick is there. You need not waste your time on all the all of the four you know the most common drug amoxicillin 500 milligrams i have to use it three times daily okay now 500 milligrams three times daily is option three so look for that in the answer look guys correct answer you have here there is multiple choice answer is there i think you all have session at nine now some that's why we'll be going a little faster guys sorry okay the answer to this question is 
amoxicillin A matches with 3, right? So here you have two, three. A matches with 3 is C. So the answer to this, correct answer to this question is C. Okay. Now the next question is, which of the following is correct? Amongst the following options, amongst the following statements, which of the following is correct that you have to. So more than one answers are correct in this question. See the question. Uh, options, chemically modified tetracycline has all its antimicrobial activity removed. Option B is doxycycline does down regulation of periodontal response while causing up regulation of TNF alpha and periostat works by inhibiting MMP9. Select the correct answer. Come on guys, fast. Correct. Guys, the keyword here is they are asking for which of the following is correct. Okay. Okay. The answer to this question is here in this statement, chemically modified tetracycline has all its antimicrobial uh, activity removed. This is correct. CMT is antimicrobial property of tetracycline is removed and only anticholaginolytic activity is there. Anticholaginolytic activity is there. So the A is correct. Doxycycline down regulates periodontal response by upregulation of TNF alpha. Guys, remember TNF alpha is a cytokine. It is an inflammatory, pro-inflammatory cytokine. So Doxycycline down regulates the TNF alpha activity. Okay. And next is periostat uh, works by inhibiting MMPs. Yes, periostat works by inhibiting anticholaginolytic. It inhibits the MMPs, matrix metalloproteinases. So the answer to this question is A and C. A is the correct answer in this, guys. Okay. Now, next question is identify the instruments used for gingivectomy. Amongst the following, which of the instruments are used for gingivectomy? Identify the instruments here. It is a multiple choice question. Whether A is used, B is used, C is used or D is used. Cut. Yes, periostat inhibits all MMPs. Yes, most of the MMPs which are responsible for causing periodontal destruction and inhibits that. You don't need to remember the, you know, all the MMPs uh, number. That is impossible to remember. Just remember, yes, it inhibits MMPs. That's it. The correct answer is D. This is your Kirkland's knife. Identify the image, Kirkland's. And this is Orban's interdental knife, right? So the answer to this question is B and C. Chalo, next question. Next question. A female patient is taking amlodipine since last three years, reported with gingival swelling in OPD. There is no correlation with plaque and calculus. Which of the following is the cause? Whether she has drug-induced gingival enlargement, B is conditioned enlargement, C is pregnancy enlargement, and D is inflammatory enlargement. Fast, guys. We don't have time. Huh? There is, uh, guys, read the question. There is no correla correlation with plaque and calculus. If plaque and calculus would have been there, then the answer would be D, inflammatory gingival enlargement. Yes, yes, very good. Yes, the answer to this question is drug-induced gingival enlargement. Somebody in the group asked how to differentiate between, uh, you know, drug-induced gingival enlargement and nodular enlargement. Directly, they will not ask you such questions. They will give you a case and then only they will ask you the question. So, it will be easier for you all to answer the question. So here the female patient is taking amlodipine. So the correct answer is drug-induced gingival enlargement. Very good. Now the next question is according to the accordion graft technique, accordion graft technique, what which of the following options is correct? First, a recipient side preparation is done. Then a partial thickness flap is taken. Multiple alternate incision is placed on the opposite sides of the graft and placement of suture. Second is recipient side preparation, multiple alternate incision, placement of suture and then place, obtaining a partial thickness graft from the donor side. Uh, C is placement of suture, recipient side preparation, obtaining partial thickness graft from the donor side and multiple alternate incision. And D is recipient side preparation, obtaining partial thickness graft from the donor side, placement of suture, multiple alternate suture uh, incision on the opposite side of the graft. Shallow guys, fast. A little bit difficult question. The answer to this question is A. The answer to this question is A. Here, according graft technique. According graft is a graft, any graft, free gingival graft. Okay, a free gingival graft is taken from a donor site, from the palate usually. And if the site, if the site on which we are going to use uh, the graft is less, sorry, it is more and the graft taken is less, what we do is we cut the graft. Suppose this is the graft and this is the site where we need to site and this is the graft. Okay. 
then what we do is we place alternate incisions like this on the back side of the graft so that it will stretch anything when we are in giving alternate incisions it will stretch and it will cover this whole area okay so this is the accordion technique now the next uh, question is type b marines classification is recalled at an interval of option a 1 to 3 months option b 4 to 6 months option c 6 months to 1 year and option d is 3 to 4 months go to marines classification guys and answer the question question Hmm. Guys, read the question. Type B. They are asking type B of Marin's classification. Without reading, don't answer the question. The answer to this question is D. So, first, in the first year, Marin's classification, in the first year, the patient who has a healthy gum and uneventful healing is recalled at three months. And a patient with any periodontal, periodontal disease condition is recalled at one to two months. After one year, after one year has finished, then the patient are divided into class A, B and C. Class A, you need to remember one keyword that is excellent. Excellent results. Patients with excellent results are recalled at six months to one year. Patient with good results, good maintained results for one year are recalled at three to four months, which come under class B. And class C is patient with poor results are recalled at one to three months. Okay, guys. Now, the last question is. Cause based treatment is done in which phase of periodontal treatment? Yeah, 19 ka D. D is the correct answer. Yes, guys. Now, next last question, guys. We don't have time fast. Cause based treatment is done in which phase of periodontal treatment, guys? Fast answer, everyone. Option A is phase 1. Option B is phase 2. Option C is phase 3. Option 4, uh, four is phase 4. Uh, hmm, hmm. Very good, guys. Uh, so, the answer to this question is phase 1. So, A. Very good. Phase 1 is etiotropic phase. Phase 2 is surgical phase. Phase 3 is restorative phase. And phase 4 is maintenance phase. There is another question that after phase one, which phase comes? So the answer to that question will be maintenance phase. Okay, guys. So I hope very good all of you for attempting all the questions and most of you answered all the questions very nicely, very correctly. So very good, really. Claps for you and all the best guys for the exams. Just uh, keep working hard and keep asking the questions. One or two questions which I have not been able to, you know, uh, clarify I'll be uh, giving the answer to these questions after the session and thank you so much good night and take care bye bye